Hey guys, uh, this is CFS Chan coming to you to talk about uh, April 9th, um, tomorrow's uh, EPL slate. Uh, Saturday, uh, it's going to be a three game main slate. Um, there is a good sizable prize pool contest. So, you know, you know, it's, you know, worth talking about it. We do have some uh, close games. So obviously, um, those are the types of slates that I really would like, would really like to play. Um, since I'm kind of like, you know, in the deep in the weeds of, uh, of, you know, knowing the players and knowing each team's tendencies and formation. So I think it really gives us a good edge um, in this, uh, on this kind of slate. So uh, let's look at the overview of the slate, uh, slate today. Um, Arsenal or tomorrow. Arsenal is a favorite at minus 150-ish um, at home against Brighton, who is the underdog at plus 450 on the road. Southampton, an underdog at plus 300. And then Chelsea, a favorite on the road at one negative uh, minus 118. And then Watford and Leeds, it's more of a toss up here. So, you know, clearly the favorites, Arsenal and Chelsea, um, should be the most popular stacks that you can uh, make with um, in your lineup and building your lineup. But really, I mean, I do think um, this Watford and Leeds game can blow up <laughs> because Leeds really has been so bad on defense and has been leaky and giving up uh, scoring chances. And then Watford really hasn't been that great either. So really this game could potentially turn out to be a, you know, gold mine as to if you are pivoting from one of these two favorite games uh, with well, one of these two games with a strong, you know, somewhat of a strong favorite. I mean, you can definitely go the Watford leads way uh, to be able to leverage that, I think, based on the ownership percentages. Um, so I do think this other game is going to be very important to target. Um, unlike um, on some other slates where you kind of have to have like let's say Manchester City or Liverpool piece, pieces but not not on this slate I, I do really think um, Watford and Leeds game can uh, produce enough fantasy points for you to kind of pivot away from the Arsenal or Chelsea game so the first game like I said on the slate is Arsenal uh, home favorite um, against Brighton so let's go over the Arsenal pieces Arsenal really has been playing the same uh, players starting 11, except for maybe the fullbacks. I know Kieran Tierney did that out last time out. And then Suarez, really, and Nuno Tavares, he had a horrible game last uh, game. And I think he got half, subbed out at halftime, after halftime. Um, so he, I don't know if he's going to play again um, for the foreseeable future. Um, let's hope that Kieran Tierney is going to come back. I don't know if he will. But the major injury, major blow to Arsenal, in my opinion, has, is going to be Thomas Party. He's been very aggressive um, this year, this whole season, uh, taking shots and creating scoring chances, even though he's playing in one of the central defensive midfielder positions. Um, so I think that's going to be a huge blow. Um, so I don't know what our coach Arteta is going to, you know, start here on the fullback position and then in the central midfield. So that's going to be the question marks that we'll have to monitor until the starter confirmation comes out one hour before the kickoff. But, you know, aside from that, really, Arsenal pieces, they kind of have to start with Saka. Saka takes a lot out of this, their set pieces, and he creates a lot of scoring chances in the open, open play as well. And then if Martinelli uh, starts, um, he didn't start last game, but I fully expect him to start here. He's going to have a share of set pieces. He takes corner kicks sometimes, but he is a very creative player. Um, he um, is a very, very dynamic player. Um, he creates a lot of scoring chances, and he can score himself as well. So really, I think I'm going to focus on Saka and then Martinelli. And then after that, really, I really like Lacazette's form. Um, he's been uh, really been a very solid player, uh, striker. Um, he's more of a kind of face the back, um, facing the back to the, you know, his, his back to the goal, um, hold the ball, um, pass it out to Martinelli or Saka and create scoring chances. Lacazette has been a very solid uh, presence up top. Um, he has been involved in a lot of goals and assists. 
So really, I mean, I think Lacazette is definitely in play. I know, you know, for me at least, I don't really like to play strikers because they don't touch the ball um, as much as, let's say, these forwards. Um, really, the striker is either a goal or bust, but Lacazette is an exception in my opinion, at least that he has been so far in the season because he likes to uh, get a lot of touches and creates uh, chances for his teammates. So really, I think Lacazette is definitely in play. And then after that, it's really Odegaard. Um, I think he's tier three, tier two is Lacazette. And then tier one, like I said, is Saka and Martinelli. Odegaard, you know, he doesn't really take a lot of um, shots or uh, um, crosses, um, but he does create um, scoring chances here and there. So I do think those four guys um, are definitely in play. And then in the midfield, like I said, if Partey is, Thomas Partey is out, um, Zaka obviously would be a good play. Um, I think he has been more aggressive recently. The last six games, seven games I saw on the stats that he's been involved in a lot of, he's been taking a lot of, not more shots than usual. And then he's been creating a lot more uh, shots assisted um, for DFS purposes. So really, that's it for Arsenal. I think, you know, whoever starts in the fullback position, I don't know if I'm going to play uh, Nuno if he starts, but Suarez is definitely in play. He likes to cross the ball when he has a chance, uh, when he has chances. Um, so I definitely prefer Suarez over Tavares. And then a huge underdog at plus 450 uh, for Brighton. It all starts with McAllister and then Gross, uh, Pascal Gross, um, I think. They take a lot of set pieces for that team. And then really Lamptey, um, I really like Lamptey, um, but not in this situation against Arsenal. Um, I think Lamptey is gonna have to defend a lot more than usual against going up against Martinelli or Saka. I mean, either either side, if he's gonna line up on the right side, of which, which I'm guessing is Martinelli is gonna be um, going up and down. So I think Lamptey is gonna be, gonna be forced um, to play a little more defensively which kind of limits his upside on fantasy points. And then if you think Brighton's going to score, I mean, obviously Malpay and Troussard, I prefer Troussard over Malpay because Troussard, gets, uh, he gets a lot more peripheral points compared to Malpay. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not going to play, for, I, unless it's for deep GPP, multi-entry GPP, I don't think I'm going to play any of these strikers. But <clears throat> I think, like I said, Gross, McAllister, and then Lamptey would be my choices. And then Cucurella, if he starts up here on the fullback wing, uh, wing uh, on the side, on the wide out position, kind of in the same boat as Lamptey, I don't think I'm going to be like thrilled to play Cucurella or Lamptey, but, you know, I think if the pricing is right, I think that they wouldn't be the worst last pieces to fit in in your roster. Second game on the slate is uh, Chelsea on the road against Southampton. Chelsea on the road, like I said, but they are a much better team than Southampton. Um, Southampton is actually not that bad. Southampton is like in the middle of the standings kind of a team. And Chelsea is, uh, you know, shooting for the top three finish um, here um, with Tottenham and then Arsenal kind of chasing, chasing them behind, behind Chelsea. But with Chelsea, it all starts with Mount, Ziyech, and then the fullbacks. Mount, Vx James and then if if Niguez, Niguez uh starts here I don't I mean I still don't like him um I probably prefer these three guys Mount Vx and James I know that um Chilwell has is injured but then if Alonso starts for some reason I, I like prefer him but you know I think it depends on the formation and the starters that come out um like I said they come out one hour before the kickoff but right now it's it would, given this formation i'd like those three guys only and then really Jorginho, if he ends up starting again he takes penalty kicks so there is some upside for Jorginho's uh, scoring upside um but either one of them is good kovacic and Jorginho. um but i do think they're gonna they're gonna have to sit back a little bit given that um given the given the matchup i think southampton's midfield is very strong in my opinion central midfield with James Ward-Prowse and Stuart Armstrong. So I do think Kovacic and Jorginho's uh, sc uh, scoring upside and uh, goal scoring chance creating upside is limited, uh, you know, more than any other previous games really. 
And then if you think Chelsea will score a lot of goals, I think Havertz is not a bad pick. I think he's a decent GPP pick. Most people will play those three guys that I just mentioned, um, but Havertz will be will probably be the lowest owned um, among those four that I just mentioned, Havertz, Mount, Ziyech, and James. Um, so I think it would be, an, you know, good leverage to play him, but, you know, he's, he doesn't have as high four points as Mount, Ziyech, or James. On the other side of the matchup is Southampton. It all starts with JWP, James Ward-Prowse. Um, somehow ends up scoring double-digit fantasy points every game. Um, so it's, he has a tough matchup against Chelsea, but um, I do think Chelsea can be leaky at times. And Southampton has been playing pretty well. It's not like they're the worst team in the league. So I do think he will get some opportunities to create some chances. Penalty, uh, uh, free kicks, corner kicks. He takes a lot of those. Um, so I do think it all starts with him at Southampton, for Southampton. And then after that, it really comes down to Stuart Armstrong and then any of these midfielders right here. I don't think I'm going to play any of the strikers here. Um, I think Tella, Armstrong are in play for GPP purposes. I don't think I'm going to play any of their fullbacks, even though sometimes that can pay off for them. Um, I think I'm going to mostly focus on their central midfielders um, who, you know, are going to win the battle in the trench of the field. I think I really like um, JWP's uh, upside. Um, I know he has a tough matchup, like I said, but I think he, I think he's still playable in an optimal setting today or tomorrow. And then last matchup, like I said, if you want to leverage um, for GBP purposes, I would stack <laughs> either of these teams, really. Um, I, I do think this has this match has a goal scoring upside written all over. I know Watford is trying to get out of that bottom three because of relegation reasons. And I know Leeds is up there barely off, you know, outside of the relegation zone. So if Leeds loses and then Watford wins, uh, they'll have 25 points and then 30. I mean, Leeds needs to be careful because they already have play, played two more games than Everton or Burnley, right? So I think both teams are going to try very, you know, try their best. Um, but given all of that, as you can see here, like Leeds has a lot of injuries, uh, injury concerns. Um, I know Bamford is out. Um, yeah, Roberts, Shackleton, they don't really matter that much or any of these guys, actually. The so Bamford is really the only one, but they've been playing without Bamford for a while. And then, um, so in Watford, you know, most players are healthy. So I, I think it's going to be a shootout. I mean, both offenses are not that bad and Leeds United, I mean, their defense is so leaky. Um, I do think, so yeah, let's start with Watford because I think Watford will have a plenty of opportunities um, for goal scoring chances. Um, it all starts with, where is he, Emmanuel Dennis. And then after that, Star and Cucho Hernandez. So I do think these top three guys are definitely in play. And then after that, really, it's Lauza, Luza, and then Kuka. Um, so these two guys, I don't know if I'll place this up, though. Um, Luza and Kuka. So I, I think I prefer Luza because Lauza, because he takes, a, he takes some share of, uh, uh, he takes a lot of set pieces, um, along with, um, Kutu Hernandez and sometimes Dennis, but not really. So I think those two guys are definitely in play in terms of like floor points. And then after that, Kiko Feminia also takes set pieces. Um, so I like Feminia and then Kamara. Um, Kamara is a better player, but Feminia crosses a ton. Um, so I like him a lot, you know, on a slate like this to kind of be, try to be sneaky, right? So I do think those are the main guys for Watford. And then Leeds United, it all starts with, starts with Rafinha. Um, Rafinha um, pretty much does everything for them. Um, he's the engine for that team. Um, but if you um, are playing him, I would pair him with Daniel James or Jack Harrison. And then like these three guys right here, even Daniel James, um, he, I know he's playing the striker position, but Leeds like to possess the ball um and create scoring chances that way instead of like crossing the ball from from the flanks um they're not they're not doing that as much um this season so i like rafinha james and harrison i like james uh more than like any other you know traditional strikers who don't really touch the ball james likes to touch the ball a lot um so i like i like him quite a bit and then as Stuart dallas and ailing but then Stuart dallas um hasn't really been playing well 
Um, but he still create crosses quite a bit. So I think those four guys are probably my core place for Leeds United, Dallas, Harrison, James, and Rafinha. But like I said, I think this game is very important for both teams for, from the relegation standpoint. Um, so I don't know if they'll play more defensively, but then even if they do, at least United actually has never shown me that they can play defensively. So I think it's more of a shootout. They try to, it's more going to be an open play where they create, try to outscore each other. So I do like um, Leeds and Watford pieces from, from that angle. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, like I said, Arsenal, Chelsea will be popular, um, but I like Leeds and Watford at the, that, that third game on the slate. But uh, if you guys have any questions or if you want to chat soccer DFS, let me know. I know some of you guys have messaged me saying that this is your first time playing. Um, but, um, you know, this slate is kind of the slate where I think, um, you know, you try to gain the edge by playing some of the players that are not as highly owned um, because some of, you know, the games are so close and, I really like the pace of this third game that won't be popular. So, yeah, I think that's that's all I got for you guys today. Like I said, I'll share my um, thoughts and comments um, before uh, the kickoff when the starters come out one hour before uh, the kickoff. So it'll be 9 a.m. Eastern time. So anyway, if you guys have any questions or just want to chat, let me know on Twitter, Discord, or on YouTube. Leave a comment. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button if you want to watch other videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.